Hey everybody, uh, it's going to be an interest on my biogas setup, so I thought I'd give everyone a bit of a walk around and show them how it's all operating. Okay, so we're in my greenhouse. These are the biodigesters. I've got the primary tank and the secondary tank. Now some of the fundamental principles of biogas is that the tanks act like stomachs. The food goes in, it digests, and you get byproducts of liquid waste and methane. You can hear it bubbling away there. And the uh, tank's temperature is 22.5. And given that it's winter and uh, it's pretty bloody cold outside, it's not too bad. There's an aquarium heater that goes down in there. But it's uh, set to about 28. Um, now, given these are uh, pretty much stomachs, they would like body temperature about 38 degrees, but anywhere between 20 and 40 the methophilic reaction happens, so we'll get methane within those ranges anyway. But if the temperature was warmer in the tank, it'd happen a lot faster. Uh, sorry if you guys are around eating time, but this is what you have to deal with. A lot, a lot of crap. Uh, especially fresh crap to make it into a stomach. That's how you start biodigesters. So what I did is I had a lot of cow manure that I made into a slurry and I fed it through this top lid because it was a lot easier than feeding it into a small pot. So with the water and the manure added, the tank sits and an acid process begins, it breaks down all the manure and then the bacteria in the cow poo starts to eat that acid and then it will generate CO2 to begin with which has to be flushed out of the system. You keep flushing until you start to hit flammable gas. So after a lot of trial and error, and using bulkheads instead of uniseals, which I should have done, like the Solar Cities design, the gas goes up through the tubing, down to here, into the water which scrubs out the CO2, making carbonic acid, and that comes up, lots of valves, a lot more tubing, into my hydrogen sulphide scrubber. Now, it's just packed with a fine steel wool from Bunnings, made airtight, and that takes away the hydrogen sulphide, which is corrosive to metal. So if you plan on compressing or running it through like a water heater, like I do, or a cooker, uh, you don't want it eating your stove or any of the metal components. So I've got the gas going into a float chamber, uh, which is just two barrels, one inside the other with water. So if I shut those valves there, uh, the tank will rise. And if I want to use it straight from that barrel, I just open the valve and the tank pushes out the gas just by its own pressure. But because the valves are open, I've got it plumbed into this air mattress. It's a queen size air mattress. Um, now, the only problem I've had with it is connecting it all together. These Boston valves, they're um, pretty tricky to find any sort of uh, adapter to because they've got their own sort of thread. So I've crudely, very crudely, just whacked a bloody small piece of pipe in there and Frankenstein this bloody barb fitting on there. It works, it's not pretty. I've had to use a lot of silicon and glue to make sure everything's airtight. Over here is my outlet uh, for the liquid fertilizer from the primary tank. Uh, every time you feed it, it displaces the water and will flow out here. And this is not necessary, but I've got a secondary tank, which is ironically the first tank I got up and running just for a proof of concept. But um, having such a small tank, it's not really practical for gas production. Uh, liquid fertilizer, yeah, sure, if that's your main goal, and just to be able to compost without smells, yeah, that's the way. But when I feed it, it flows out there, and there's a T joint there to stop the siphon effect, it flows into another feed tube, which is behind that little scrubber, and then that displaces out here, other siphon stopper, and then just goes into this bucket, and then I just whack it in these containers and that's good for all your plants and stuff, you dilute it down a bit. So once the digester has started up and producing flammable gas, you can actually start feeding it food and it loves food. Um, so here I've just got some crackers, uh, banana skins, there's some leftover greens and yeah, coffee grinds and apple cores and that. I'll just whack it into here with a bit of water, blend it all up. 
but because I'm using rainwater and the rainwater is outside, it's extremely cold. So I actually have to heat the water uh, to about yeah, 35 or something. I've got a kerosene stove. So I heat that up and then that can be fed to the digester. And there's a bit of a quick walk around, uh, very basic at the moment. I'll do some more videos later on about using the gas. When this mattress is full, I'll uh, hook it up to the hot water system, give that a whirl. I've also got a barbecue that's been altered to run on biogas, so we'll use that. Uh, concept is good. Uh, in temperate climates, maybe not so great, but certainly where the temperature is constant, so like Queensland, it's, it'd be great. Uh, you wouldn't have to use heaters or this insulation that I've got around it. It's certainly been a learning experience. Uh, a lot of stress and trial and error. Uh, a little tiny air leak can ruin your day. It doesn't bubble through, you don't collect it. Uh, realised when I first tried it, I start, I just whacked food in it uh, without realising it was a setup process of about three weeks before it will actually start producing gas. If you start feeding it food while it's not up and running, uh, the acid just greatly increases and it goes sour and it smells. So I had to drain the tank and start again. So research goes a long way, um, but it's been a learning curve, been fun, and I recommend everyone try it. And thanks for watching.